SeaWorld Orlando has announced a brand new surf coaster for 2021. Is this real? And if it is, what's a surf coaster? Tune in on Coaster Chat to find out. The surf coaster. Surf coaster. The surf coaster. DNM surf coaster. Ah, the surf coaster. The most talked about thing in the coaster enthusiast community. A few weeks ago, Sea Orlando has announced a brand new coaster that will be coming in 2021. And after permits being leaked, the ride was titled The Surf Coaster. And the ones responsible for creating this new coaster never before seen before was none other than Bali Garden Mabiard. The ride is first of its type, but we have nothing, absolutely nothing, that can tell us what this coaster will look like, be like, act like, and the intensity level. There's been lots of rumors and speculation about the type of coaster it'll be, but I kind of have some of my own thoughts. Some of them are pretty standard, and some of people already have said that, but I actually have my own ideas too. So today on Coaster Chat, we're going to figure out what type of coaster this new ride will be. So without further ado, let's begin. I don't know if you noticed, but SeaWorld has gone overboard with brand new coasters to their parks. SeaWorld San Antonio got Texas Stingray, SeaWorld San Diego got the Emperor Dive Coaster, and SeaWorld Orlando is getting Icebreaker as well. Plus their sister parks Busch Gardens got Pantheon and Iron Gwazi, with more new coasters on the horizon for 2021. But right now, one of the most talked about new rumors for 2021 for SeaWorld Orlando is the brand new surf coaster. No one knows what it is like I said earlier, but we can still figure out a lot about the ride just from its name. Here's what we know. It's a B&M coaster. The name is Surf Coaster and it's going to a SeaWorld Park. That's literally all we know, but it's pretty useful a little bit. The name Surf Coaster automatically makes you think of surfing. Obviously, it has surf in the name. And what you do in surfing is, you go on a wave, and you stand up and you ride that wave with a lot of twists and turns, and sometimes you drop down on the wave almost like a roller coaster. And that's a pretty good detail of what the coaster could look like. Obviously, if it's called a surf coaster, I just bet 100% that it has to be over water. Now, I could be wrong about this, and it might be over land, because I'll explain later in the predictions that there's a chance that it could be over land, but I feel like it has to be over water. Now, if it is over water, they could do something very unique. Do you know Manta at SeaWorld Orlando, that B&M flyer coaster? Well, one thing that's really iconic about the ride is that turn where you go over the water and the water splashes like you cut over the water. And I feel like if this roller coaster takes place over the water, there can be some pretty neat water effects. For an example, you're flying on top of the water and the water just spray out to the side as you land down the drop. Or they like make a waterfall, like a man-made waterfall on, on top of the drop and it looks like you're going down the waterfall. That, that's like amazing. But right now I'm talking about the theming. But what about the actual coaster and what will it look like? Well, actually we have a clue that could be pretty substantial to know what it will look like. It's a B&M coaster. So, we should look back at what the B&M coasters look like. B&M, back then, was known as the Coaster King. They created lots of nice roller coasters that took people upside down and made people dive off really, really high heights. A crazy inverting coaster, stand-up coasters, floorless coasters, things never before seen on a coaster. But as time went by, they started to play it safe. They don't want to create crazy roller coasters like Intamin and SNS that have technical problems because of their insaneness of going extremely high or extremely fast. They're known for having the extremely reliable coasters. Their roller coasters are somewhat smooth and don't break down much. Plus, if you notice, all their coasters look pretty similar. You can tell right off the bat it's a B&M coaster from the track, train style, and supports. A dive coaster looks pretty similar to a B&M flawless. And then the inverted coaster looks like a B&M flawless, but without the inversion. Their coasters are pretty, pretty relatable. So this new coaster will most likely be no different. 
it has to be similar to their previous coasters. Plus, extremely reliable. B&M isn't known for a terrible coaster company. They're actually pretty good, except for one time where one of their coasters was an extreme failure, and that was a stand-up model. Now, back then, they were extremely popular, but as time went by, these rides got rougher and rougher and a lot more painful. Lots of people did not like it, especially guys. I haven't been on one yet, but I'm kind of expecting the worst. But who knows, maybe my expectations are wrong, and they're actually pretty cool. But there's been a new coaster trend lately that Six Flags and other parks have been turning stand-up coasters into B&M floorless conversions. For example, Six Flags America used to have Apocalypse B&M stand-up coaster, but in 2019, we got the B&M flawless conversion of it to Firebird. The ride is significantly better now, although it's still kind of weak for a coaster, but it feels a lot better. And most likely in the future, all stand-up coasters will eventually go away and replace with the B&M Floorless, possibly. But how is B&M going to make up for their failure of the stand-up coaster? With a revamped stand-up coaster. I know, that sounds extremely dumb, but before going to the comment section, think about this. We've seen coaster companies in the past revive their old design concepts. Take SNS for example. They created Hypersonic XLC at King's Dominion. It was their first air compressed launch coaster. But because it was a prototype and first of its type, there was still a lot of technical difficulties and bugs in the ride. So in 2019, they revived their old design concept with Max Force, the new air compressed launch coaster. It's faster, smoother, and more efficient. And they changed their old design for the better. So why can't B&M create their own revival of their original stand-up coaster? But that begs the question, what will it look like? Will it still look like a stand-up coaster and be no different? Well, no. We already established that B&M coasters look similar. So keep in mind that the tracks would look no different than any other B&M coaster. But think about the name, Surf Coaster. B&M names their roller coaster types based on what they look like, like a dive coaster because it dives, stand up because you're standing up, and a floorless because you have no floor under you. So why would they name it a surf coaster? It's not because they were bought them, no. It's because it has to look like a surf roller coaster for a reason. Like maybe the cars have a surfboard appearance. Maybe the movements that ride is like a surfer. Or like you're standing up on a surfboard type coaster car and you're twisting and turning and doing inversions like a surfer would in real life. Now how would that work you may ask? Well, the car looks like a surfboard, we already said that. But here's something that'll be a little bit different. The coaster will have the single rail coaster type with one rider per row, with a total of four riders per car, and the ride will be capable of inversions and hard twists and turns. Now I have two ideas for this but let me list idea number one. Obviously it's like a regular coaster, you're standing up, it's more comfortable because they fix the restraints and it's not painful like the regular stand up. And it's unique and forceful. But here's option two, if they go this route, which I'll be really surprised if they do, the coaster will be capable of tilting. Yes, tilting. Just imagine, you're on that surfboard coaster and suddenly, the car starts twisting to the left and twisting to the right, even though you're on a piece of straight track. Now obviously there's not going to be a straight track on the coaster, but just imagine that, in a spiral or helix or a turn, your car can be twisting left and right, judging by the controlled movement. So even if you're turning to the right, your surfboard could be tilting to the left, which will add more intensity to the coaster, as well as going over the water and water effects, this coaster is pretty solid. Now it'll be a complete dream come true if my dream comes to reality. But in case that doesn't happen, here's prediction number two. This will be the last prediction of the surf coaster. Basically it's more on the common sense side. It's a brand new coaster, but it's not a stand up coaster and it will be capable of intense turns, hence the name surf coaster, like movements a surfer does. It will be a sit-down coaster, might contain launches to intense the ride, and with brand new cars that B&M has, has never created before. But hopefully, this COVID-19 pandemic ends soon and stops the bankruptcy of most theme parks and roller coaster businesses, because if this continues, 
they could go bankrupt and this ride will not be added to SeaWorld Orlando. Hopefully it does. I'm really hoping it does. I think it might will, but if it doesn't, that's kind of sad. So what do you think? Do you agree with my predictions? And is there any coaster that, might, that I didn't list on this video? Comment below. Before I end this video, I would like to give a huge, huge shout out to Cali Coaster Girl. She's almost at 100 subs, and yesterday she lost some subs for absolutely no reason. So help her out by giving her 100 subs and more. She makes really good content and great videos, and I'll know you'll like her channel. So thank you for watching. This is JB Thrills signing out.